Hey teachers, with the start of a new semester, you might already be seeing student submissions that read awful lot like they could be AI generated rather than student written. So I thought it might be instructive to show you how students might be using a popular AI tool, ChatGPT, to generate AI content based off of your assignment prompts. And in addition, I wanted to show the difference between the free version of chat, GPT 3.5, and the paid version of chat, which is GPT 4, so that you can see a comparison in the outputs. This is particularly useful for those of you that know AI is out there and that students could be using it, but don't engage with the tools yourself and maybe don't know how they work. And at the end of this video, after the demonstration, I'll talk a few, a little bit about some of the policies that we're doing in our Department of Technical Communication at the University of North Texas to monitor uh, or control the use of AI assistance in our classroom uh, and some strategies that you can bring to your program directors or department chairs moving forward because I'm sure if you're watching this video you know AI is not only not going anywhere but it is only going to get better uh, as the language models improve. So I'm in GPT 3.5 right now which is the the free version of chat and I'm going to just go ahead here and I'm going to paste the assignment prompt that we give in our introductory technical writing course it's a simple introductory discussion post who are you and why do you want to be in this class and yes this is a good signal that if you're reading AI generated content or the possibility of something on this very simple early assignment you potentially have a problem in your classroom that you want to kind of nip in the bud sooner rather than later so this prompt is please introduce yourself and tell us some of the following details and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to channel my inner sophomore here and just answer the prompts in the way that I think um, most college students who know AI is out there know how to get to chat but maybe don't have the expertise in prompt engineering that they would need because I maintain garbage in garbage out. If you don't know how to prompt engineer, if you don't know how to speak robots, uh, you're going to get garbage out in terms of the quality. And in some ways that works to our benefit as educators because most of the students that we're working with are developing writers and communicators. That's why they're in college so they don't yet have the sophistication to speak robot. So where are you from? I'm just going to say Dallas, Texas and I'm not even going to capitalize because again I'm, I'm channeling my inner sophomore here. Why did you choose to take this class online? Um, I'm going to say convenience and yeah I'm going to spell it wrong and I work. What is your major? I'll pick on myself. I'll say technical communication. What are your career goals? To get a job. What are your favorite hobbies? Um, I'm going to say none really, like music, food, exclamation point, hanging with friends, and what do you want to learn from this course? Uh, write more, write better, and improve my, I'm going to say speaking skills. Now you'll notice here that I kept things very brief, um, very concise. I have typographical errors, grammar errors, something that you would probably see in something that was human written by a freshman or a sophomore student. So we're going to go ahead and submit this prompt and see what GPT 3.5 spits out. So first of all, you can see that it gives us four fully fleshed out paragraphs. And that in and of itself might be an early signal to you that something could have been AI generated. It has been my experience that AI gener uh, generated prose is overwritten. It often includes a lot of adjectives, a lot of hyperbolic words or more dramatic language. And those are signals to me, especially when I'm teaching technical communication, because I'm more primed to notice that those are not, for example, characteristics of clear and concise language. So let's look to see here what chat gave us. My name is, and it's given us the courtesy of at least making up our own name, and I'm joining this class from Dallas, Texas. I'm excited to be part of this online learning experience. The reason I chose to take this class online is primarily due to convenience. I have a job that keeps me occupied so the flexibility of online learning fits well with my schedule. Now that's a relatively decent first paragraph in the sense that there aren't any what I would call 
AI words in there. You know, something that I would look for, for example, is I hail from the vibrant city of Dallas, Texas. If you see those types of words or the overuse of those adjectives or unfamiliar verbs like hail that we don't say in common speech, let alone write down, those are going to be signals to you that something is AI generated. But again, you know, you may find that flexibility of online learning fits well with my schedule. There's nothing really there that would cue into me that this was AI generated other than there's a complete lack of specificity. And that could be because the student's just choosing not to give that information that they don't yet understand to show instead of tell, um, or that it could be AI generated. So there aren't really a lot of cues there in the first paragraph. I'm majoring in technical communication. I've always been interested in effective communication, especially in technical fields. And I believe that this major aligns well with my skills and interests. Okay, so Again, from a language perspective, there isn't any clear words there that would signal to me that something is AI generated. But again, there is a complete lack of specificity here. Interested in effective communication in the technical fields. What does that mean? It's just kind of repeating empty words, all right? Believe it aligns with my skills and interests. Well, what are those? As for my career goals, they're straightforward. I aim to secure a job in the field of tech comm. I believe that clear and concise communication is crucial in today's fast-paced world and want to contribute to making complex information more understandable and accessible. Now, you language teachers out there know that in today's fast-paced world or in today's society, those are overused cliche phrases, but they're overused and cliched. Why? Because freshmen and sophomore use them. So again, AI is just taking what it's scraped off the internet over the last 20 or 30 years, and that could be a lot of poorly written freshman and sophomore papers that include those cliches. In terms of hobbies, I don't have any specific favorites, but I do enjoy music and exploring different types of food. Food. Spending time with friends is something I value and find enjoyable. In this course, I'm hoping to learn to become a better writer and enhance my speaking skills. Effective communication involves both written and verbal aspects, and I believe that improving these skills will not only benefit me academically, but also in my future academic uh, endeavors. I enjoy, uh, look, I'm looking forward to engaging with all of you and learning from this course. Thank you. That may be a little AI-ish because very rarely do these students look forward to engaging with all of us. But again, especially early in the semester, you're not going to know a lot about these individuals. You don't know their educational background. You don't know their personal background. You don't know where they could have acquired these language skills. So you're not really yet able to determine whether something was AI generated or not. So that was with 3.5. That was a very um, simple prompt. And you can see here, I didn't give it a lot to work with. And it came out relatively clean. All right, so let's take that same prompt that I did. I'm going to go ahead and copy it here and paste it into GPT-4. We're going to do the same thing. So the last version, we got four fully fleshed out paragraphs. Here, we've got about the same. Hey class, my name is blank and I hail from the lively city of Dallas, Texas. So remember what I said, hail from the vibrant city. Here we got hail from the lively city, all right? Those two types of things are, in my estimation, that would send off alarm bells with my mind because I work a lot with AI-generated content. And even if you use AI a little bit, you're gonna begin to recognize specific words that the AI uses over and over again. Hail is one of them. You're going to see an overuse of adjectives and adverbs. So the lively city, the vibrant city. AI is like a dictionary slot machine. You just kind of pull the lever and see what happens. I said vibrant, they said lively pretty much synonyms of the same thing. I chose to take this course online primarily for its convenience, especially since I'm juggling work alongside my studies. I'm majoring in technical communication, a fascinating field that merges both technology and effective communication. Note, there isn't a lot of specificity in there because I didn't give it a lot of specificity and the AI is not necessarily going to make things up. And I offer this as an example because sometimes students' brevity works to their advantage because 
they don't want to give a lot of information and AI is really one of those things that the less you give it the better it sometimes is it's when you give it overly complex ideas and things that it tends to go off the rails as for my career aspirations I aim to secure a job in my majors domain applying the skills and knowledge I gather throughout my academic experience so domain you know we don't I don't use that word a lot um, especially with regards to my major so again you know start thinking and jotting down words if you teach in a classroom and you're kinda of getting used to AI start writing down words make a checklist of words that you see a lot because again the AI will reuse those words when it comes to my hobbies I don't have any particular ones that stand out however I have a deep appreciation for music absolutely love trying out different cuisines and cherish moments spent hanging with friends in this course I hope to refine my writing abilities and boost my speaking skills. Boost would be a word that it's like, hmm, that's an interesting word choice for that particular sentence. Every learning opportunity is a step forward, and I look forward to the shared journey with all of you. Okay, so I want to draw your attention to that ending because it ends on an exclamation point. And if you go down to our 3.5 version, I look forward to engaging with all of you and learning from this course. Thank you. Now, most of us adult learners would just strip out that last sentence. Sometimes students won't. AI tends to suffer from what I call boitis, in that no matter what it writes, it always wants to tie everything up in a big red bow at the end. It always wants to kind of end on a hoorah kind of note there. So that is another signal that something could be AI generated because most students are not going to take the time potentially if they're using AI to generate a, an introductory post to edit it very heavily. So what do you do with all this information? Every department and every institution is going to have different policies. So I'm not here to make recommendations, but I do want to offer some suggestions and some things that we're doing in our Department of Technical Communication. What I am advising instructors to do in these introductory assignments if they begin to suspect that something is AI generated is to first grade the assignment as they normally would and by that I mean if you have a rubric if you have a set of criteria pretend that you don't know or don't suspect that the prose was AI generated and graded accordingly. Chances are that prose is going to lack specificity, it's going to lack brevity. So if you have criteria like, you know, conciseness, if you have things about specificity or, you know, concrete uh, descriptions, those are ways that you can kind of begin to lower the score. That sends an important signal to students because I think that there's this perception that if they use AI, they're going to get a magic 100%. Now, unfortunately, you can't usually go after after students for grammar because what you're going to notice with AI is that it has incredible grammar reduction and so you're going to basically find error free and in fact it's going to be when the students probably edit their work where the errors are going to show up but that's not where you stop you know after you've graded it I would put a note in the comments in a very passive voice sentence and say as a reminder this section is governed by the AI assistance policies if you have some type of AI assistance policies if it's in an online course I would refer them to the module and the page that those assistance policies are in and I would paste them in and then add if you ever have any questions about using AI for classroom use please reach out to me I believe it is very important that we treat AI as not this dirty little secret that we acknowledge that it's there that we try to remain relatively neutral or in some cases positive about its use because I think this you know you can't use it we're gonna ban it forever approach is not going to be effective then I would document that exchange with your program director and or your department chair so that they are aware of these issues now most of you are probably well into the first or second week of your semester and so it's near impossible to all of a sudden start introducing new policies now that doesn't mean that you can't deal with AI assisted issues over the course of the semester start documenting your notes and your reactions to when you encounter AI content things that you see in terms of word choices organization 
patterns that you're beginning to see. And then, you know, come November, December, or wherever you are toward the end of your semester, use that information and try to initiate some department-wide policies related to AI. In addition, if you're currently teaching in a classroom now and you're suspecting that AI is being overused, you know, you can always bring smaller writing assignments back into the classroom so that you can observe things being done. It takes up class time, but if there's something that is really important that demonstrates students' comprehension up into a certain point, uh, you know, bring them in, give them timed writing assignments. You know, we use a lot of timed writing assignments in our classes because it simulates a workplace environment where you have to work under deadline. There are also ways in a learning management systems where you can create timed prompts where students have a certain amount of time to answer stuff. Obviously you can't control if they consult AI just in the way that you couldn't control if they consult outside sources. Try to keep an open mind about this stuff. You're not going to be able to stop it and you're not going to be able to stop students from using it. So regardless of what your opinions are, try to take a step back and try to initiate a conversation with students. If you're seeing this issue prevalent in your class, have them write an essay or open a discussion prompt where you get them thinking about the ethicalities of using AI and specifically apply it to an introductory writing class. You know, where would AI potentially be useful? Maybe for brainstorming, maybe for proofreading. Where would it not be so useful and why? Sometimes showing that you're a little bit more open-minded about these tools, especially compared to their other teachers, might make you more of a source or an expert to students, and it's going to much more invite an open conversation about these issues.